So really excited to share with you that today we will be talking with David Adley, Director of Outbound Sales with Bonfire. So we will be learning from David about apparel fundraising, what that looks like, and in regards, Bonfire in particular does um, t-shirt fundraisers, but they have launched, as, as David said a little bit earlier, seems like almost every week a new product line. So uh, that's what we're going to dive into. Of course, we want to start every episode by thanking our presenting sponsors. You can see their logos right in front of you on the screen. We are so extremely grateful to have their continued support and um, to continue the show. If you've been watching or maybe this is your first time, you will know or you will know now that our <laughs> 300th episode is Friday. So we typically do every Friday as an ask and answer. This Friday, we are going to, of course, thank our pre presenting sponsors and really just share kind of what we've noticed along the 300 episodes and what we are looking forward to in the future as we all continue to navigate this recovery phase. Thank you so much to Julia Patrick for creating the nonprofit show. Julia is the CEO of the American Nonprofit, and I get to have fun every day with her. I'm Jarrett Ransom, the nonprofit nerd, also CEO of the Raven Group. So thanks again for joining us today for another episode of the nonprofit show. As I mentioned, we have David with Bonfire, and welcome, David. Thanks so much, Jarrett, Julia. You guys are, I've only been here a couple of minutes. I can tell you're a lot of fun. Appreciate you having me. <laughs> We are. Yeah. And imagine when like the camera is not rolling, right? <laughs> I, I can't, I can't imagine. So maybe we'll get a little bit off camera time later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, t-shirt culture has become such a cornerstone of American, well, I'd say American society, but global society during the pandemic. And before t-shirts were kind of special use things because you really couldn't in a lot of ways wear them to work or you didn't wear them to work and now over this past nearly two years people are wearing t-shirts and a bonfire i think has got to be right in that sweet spot of all of this activity and so talk to us about your platform how you founded this company how it started and the evolution of it yeah it's really funny you mentioned that actually because my coworkers, my teammates were making fun of me this morning in a little stand-up meeting we had because they were like, I didn't know you owned any other shirts besides t-shirts. <laughs> and I was like, I'm going on the nonprofit show today. I got to look respectable. Oh. Uh, but I don't think I've worn anything but a t-shirt to work for you know the last six years yeah, um, that, I've, that I've been at Bonfire. Um, but yeah, you're, you're exactly right. There is something special about t-shirts uh, and that's why a platform like ours exists and, you know, not to get too philosophical about them right off the bat, but there is just something emotionally resonant and different about fundraising with them because not only are you giving back, but you're also saying a bit about who you are every time you put on that t-shirt. So um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of special qualities in my opinion. I think so. So Talk to us. I mean, you use the most an interesting phrase, apparel fundraising. I love that because you put those two words together and it's kind of this magical thing. Talk to us about how Bonfire is really championing that concept. Yeah, I think uh, apparel fundraising has historically maybe been a cringeworthy term uh, for a lot of folks in the nonprofit world, just based on my experience working with so many of them. Um, they all have, without a doubt, a horror story about a box or multiple boxes or bins of shirts that are still collecting dust or cobwebs in a corner of their office that some poor intern now has to sort through and find, figure out something to do uh, with them. And, you know, for us, that's why our platform exists is to alleviate that burden and make apparel fundraising easy and fun. And to use your words, magical, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, this logistical nightmare that I think a lot of people associate with t-shirts. Um, and, you know, that's what our platform serves to alleviate that burden. Yeah. You just triggered a lot of PTSD for me. And I, and I, <laughs> I don't say that in a joking way or, or kind of do, but I, I don't mean to make light, light of PTSD, but I can like visually see and feel that dark closet 
that was the storage room, right? And the shirts were shoved in this bin. We had no idea what sizes they were, no idea what colors they were. Inventory was so not our jam, right? So like we, we deliver programs, we don't do inventory. So I think, yes, you hit the nail on the head or maybe the gong on the center, right? With this whole like, you know, just re- reverberating, if that's the right word, yeah. kind of like aha, because yes, yes, yes. I think we can all relate to that. That's right. Well, I'll, I'll put a finer point on that for you here. Let's, we'll give, I'll give you, a, this is a relic of our old office. Here it goes. <laughs> I love it. Okay, that's a first. For the yeah. nonprofit show, we didn't I have do it the first of many. We first often we, we still use the gong uh, virtually to celebrate whenever we work with a big get a new non big nonprofit client to use Bonfire's platform. So um, doesn't have quite the same punch it used to in the office. I will say, <laughs> I love it. I think that's brilliant. I really, really do. Well, talk to us about the power of branded merchandise. I mean, um, one of the things your website is fabulous, by the way, and um, when I look at the designs and you, you, you do a masterful job on the website of showing different clients and how they've done their shirts. To me, the starting point is great design. Those shirts are really cool. I mean, they're not just the standard block of logos all over, um, you know, a la NASCAR or something. I mean, they're like really cool messages. And so I'm, I'm curious about that. How do you work with clients? Have your clients all come to you with these designs or do you help them out? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's kind of a mixed bag, but I think you nailed a really salient point, which is that design is paramount to the success of a really good apparel fundraising campaign. And I do think that's why our platform has been able to have the success we had is in large part to our amazing design team. And I appreciate you calling out the ones that we've featured on the site, but there are so many within that, um, that they, whether we work with a massive nonprofit or a small animal rescue or anything in between, it's like, we're, we're, we are very passionate about making sure they launch with something that's going to have that emotional resonance with their supporters, because in addition to inventory, not being in anybody's jam, neither is kind of like your standard logo apparel, no (laughs) offense to most nonprofits, but I think that, they're not designers and nor should they be, you know, this is, they have a mission that they're going after and trying to focus on creative graphic design is typically not at the top of the list, but, and that's why I think a lot of people have bad experiences with apparel when they're raising the past is because they like, Oh, we slapped our logo on a shirt and why is nobody buying it? Well, it's because they don't want to look, they, they look in their drawer and they're not excited about putting it on. So I think that kind of consultative approach we have with our nonprofit clients leads to a lot more success fundraising with apparel than they have had historically. Wow. I love that. Jerry, so this you goes a beyond the like race t-shirt. Am I right, David? Because I'm guilty. I have signed up for those races just to get that t-shirt or even <laughs> better, a long sleeve t-shirt. That is like gold, right? Yeah. And um, so these with Bonfire, there's so many different options um, when it comes to apparel fundraising. And it goes beyond, I, I, I don't want to say that you don't offer the race t-shirt, but I, I, what I've seen is it goes beyond that. Yeah, beyond that, not just in terms of design, but in terms of the actual quality of the apparel too. So it's actually, uh, I, use, I use this line a lot when I talk to clients. It's like, we don't want you to think about your standard 5K day race shirt because you put that on once. And you're like, this doesn't feel great, you know? (laughs) Um, So we only source, you know, really high quality apparel that actually looks and feels really good. Mm -hmm. Now you're doing something really interesting and and pretty unique. And that is, is that you're not only helping with the design and the production and, and quality and feel, but your platform also has the interactive aspect. So you're working directly with the consumer and the transactions are happening that way through you all, right? So you're not going to get the the uh, the closet full of old T-shirts. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the whole logistical process we offload from the nonprofit and put it onto us. Not just in terms of the order fulfillment, but then the subsequent customer service that comes with the inevitable size exchanges. Um, order got lost by USPS. You know, you name it. 
Bonfire is going to take that burden off the nonprofit and make sure that their supporters are 100% taken care of. So it's completely risk free from the jump. They'll never, you never pay anything to use Bonfire. Um, we, you, Bonfire and the nonprofit only make money if shirts are sold. So they'll never have to take the risk of upfronting a cost for a bunch of shirts that they may or may not sell. And then if the campaign does awesome, they actually stand to make more money um, as they sell more shirts within the campaign because we get a bigger discount the larger the order is essentially. Wow. The brain is spinning, Julia. I'm seeing yeah, like a nonprofit show apparel coming out I here so. in the fall, maybe, yeah. um, which, which does lend me right to uh, David, are you only for nonprofits or do you also have a for-profit uh, line or, or market opportunity? So we primarily started as a fundraising platform, mostly for what, what I would say would be urgent causes, you know, have a family member who's sick, um, oh. you need to raise money for medical benefits. And we did work with a handful of nonprofits that definitely evolved into being like, man, we have a great model for nonprofits too. Mm -hmm. And now it's even expanded further past that. So while I believe that nonprofits are still our primary audience, we have really seen a need for this on even like the content creator side of things. So think like YouTubers, Instagrammers, yes. um, people who want to monetize their brand. Uh, they built a very loyal following for. And yeah, we've, we've really seen an uptick in that side of our business. And then last year, in the pan during the height of the pandemic, um, we really, for the first time ever, had broken into kind of like the small businesses. We were seeing massive amounts of restaurants you know, raising much needed funds with, you know, they've never done kind of campaigns like these in the past before. So it always amazes me how much our model continues to fit different molds. Mm -hmm. What's the average per t-shirt uh, range that you, that an, or a nonprofit can assume that they're going to be able to take away on this? It's typically between 10 and $15 per mm -hmm. shirt. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's higher than I thought based on the services that you're selling and do you guide your clients to set parameters on what the best sales ranges are going to be price ranges or is it i mean yeah. are, they, are they different absolutely yeah so the reason why there is that fluctuation is one like i mentioned you can make more as you just have a larger amount of sales in your campaign but you could also have a very complex design and, you know, that just essentially adds to our costs for producing the apparel. So if you have eight colors on the front and the back, it's going to be a pretty pricey shirt for us to produce. So sometimes we'll counsel them to say, hey, look, I actually don't think you need this. Let's go with a simpler design. And to be honest, most of the time, the simpler the design, the better it's actually going to sell. Right. Sure. So talking about selling, what products are you seeing or themes that are selling best? You know, even as we add more and more products to our site, nothing beats the tried and true t-shirt. I, I got it. Nothing, nothing that we add, whether it's water <laughs> bottles, joggers, cropped hoodies, uh, beanies, you name it. Um, t-shirts still make up roughly 80% of the total sales, uh, sales on the platform. So Did you get into the masks as well during the pandemic. Yep. So that was the one big thing that did really cut into it last year. We, okay. we did, we ended up doing, we have a few different options of masks now, but um, yeah, during the height of pandemic and even still, certainly a lot of mask campaigns were, were popping up and um, yeah, we were fortunate to be able to, to jump on that too. Wow. That's so interesting. I would imagine that as um, <clears throat> an organization is evolving through different parts or projects or even seasons they could keep adding t-shirt designs and it doesn't have to just be one thing it could be a celebration of a milestone or a specific program or even the run-up to an event julia i gotta hire you i feel like you could you could sell this okay. platform you're ready to go because you're exact okay i got a witness to you this is really <laughs> this is like a true story i ran so i'm almost 60 I ran in college, I know, shock, grab your pearls, clutch your pearls there, <laughs> David. Um, so that was like when Flashdance came out and when I was in college. And so I ran a t-shirt business out of my dorm room and I convinced my dad to like get me the bigger, a bigger room, like a double so that I could run my t-shirt business on the one side without, you know, roommate, which is- Were like you doing silk screens where you were like pushing? No. 
I found, I didn't do that because that was like running a business out of my dorm room and I knew I'd get caught and booted off campus. So I found a company in my hometown that had a self screening business. Yeah. And I just did a whole bunch of branded t shirts for our, our college, which didn't have them. They weren't selling them in the bookstore, they were only selling books. I kind of went to an egghead school and I was like, hell no, we need t shirts. And I'm telling you, it was just fascinating to see um, how yeah. it kind of was tribal, you know? And, and then we, we figured out we better start launching additional t shirts because we sold one, we wanted to sell more. Yeah. And, um, but I think I never, I haven't really put two and two together with the nonprofit side of how that this could really work um, as not only, you know, a campaign issue, but a, a fundraising piece. It's very I, interesting. I love the entrepreneurial spirit and yeah, that you tapped into something there that is deeply <laughs> embedded within all of us, that yeah. tribal, I want to belong somewhere. And that's what t-shirts can, can do, you know, at scale, whether it's a content creator's community to show I'm a fan or a nonprofit, I support this cause, you know, in addition to donating, you're actually showing that this is, these are my people. And I think that's, what's really powerful about apparel fundraising. And I think too, as you had mentioned earlier, David, it's, you know, it, it really says a lot about the person. It says who you are. It, it's personality, you know, I mean, I love a good tank top and a blazer. I feel dressed up, you know, like I can totally, I can totally wear that in my community and feel like I'm showing up in a very polished manner, knowing that, you know, I've gone on like a racerback tank top, but I'm, I'm sporting a message or a cause or, you know, a wonderful organization that is very clearly apparel fundraising, you know? And so Bonfire is such a wonderful platform for that. Um, let's dive a little deeper into your platform because we do have a question from one of our, our live attendees today uh, and wanting to know if, um, if they want to provide t-shirts to their staff, would, would they be able to provide a code so they can order but not pay? Um, so that the staff could not pay, basically. That's correct. So the organization wants to, okay. what I'm hearing, wants to foot the bill and purchase t-shirts for the staff. Yeah. So right now we have a way of facilitating this where you can make a custom, basically we'll call it a private campaign link. You just share that with the staff and then you have maybe another one if you wanted to, that has the same design that you could make public uh, for a higher price. But for the, for the organization to foot the bill, all they had to do is send us basically a spreadsheet breakdown, and then we'd basically uh, just charge them on the back end and then ship directly to all the staff members. Uh, it's going to get even easier, actually, in the coming months when we release this coupon code feature we have in the pipeline, which will be able to do it exactly, it sounds like, as this listener just described. Yes. You know, That's that makes wonderful. sense, because I think for us... Um, a lot of us are looking for things that we can thank our, our donors with, or we can, you a know, team. do something that would be a team or a staff. I mean, so that kind of David figured that figures prominently, I think probably in what this viewer was thinking. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit more about your donor demographics. I'm really interested in this because, um, you know, would the patrons of, let's say an opera or theater company be as interested in um, t-shirts as maybe something that deals with children or more of a youth, youth population? Yeah, good question. And before I jump in, speaking of youth population, if you hear my son crying in the background, it's apologies, okay. it's nap time. It's good, it's good, no. We, I cry when I need to nap too, I'm <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> Well, uh, I, one really interesting piece about donor demographics on our site is that consistently we found that when we work with nonprofits, they're unable to unlock, if you envision like this giving py pyramid, um, at the, the very bottom is essentially people like me, you know, younger folks looking to donate to a nonprofit for the first time, and maybe they don't want to give a traditional donation, they're a little selfish, they want to get something back in return, so in this case, that's what I think t-shirt fundraising provides. It unlocks that bottom tier of the given pyramid for them. 
Interesting. And so when you talk about this, um, are you creating within your portal, the nonprofit can frame in your, um, your, your digital store in essence, or is it a link that then takes them off to, to the bonfire site? How interactive is that? I guess is my question. So we'll, we act as bonfire. One of the main value props for a nonprofit is that we offload the payment processing and basically all the fulfillment, like I talked about. Um, but they're always going to be essentially taken to that separate bonfire campaign page. They can embed it, a store link in their site if they want to. And we have a lot of nonprofits to do that. Um, but ultimately, they're always going to transact on Bonfire's platform so that we can handle all of the customer service. You know, we're going to send those emails afterwards and say, thanks for your purchase. Feel free to contact us if you need help with anything. Awesome. Oh, my God. I love that. And um, another question that I had that kind of relates to the demographic part. How many products do you advise your clients to have? I mean, is it like a one and done T-shirt? Or are you saying start with five things or what, what, is, what is your recommendation? So it depends on uh, what stage of their apparel journey they're on, I think. Okay. And if it's, their, for example, a nonprofit who's never launched kind of an apparel fundraiser in this digital format before, I always suggest starting small um, because uh, we use this phrase, we throw this term a lot, supporters can get paralysis by analysis. And if they have too many things to focus on, um, then they might actually not end up getting anything at all. Uh, whereas if you say like, hey, these are going to be the couple, two to three options you can choose from, especially from a branding standpoint. You don't want to go too crazy and you get too many off-brand colors in your offerings. Um, then that way you can kind of create that cohesive tribal feel when everybody gets their apparel. And there's so many secondary things you can do afterwards. Ask people to take photos post themselves in the picture. And then you have this kind of collage of folks who are excited about their apparel and then that builds to more sales. So it all kind of compounds on itself over time. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm guilty of that analysis paralysis, you know, and it, the same as a restaurant. If I go to a restaurant and there's a super huge menu, I just pick a page. I just pick one page and I pick something on that page to eat because then the same in shopping carts, right? I look at well, I could get this tank top in gray, or I could get it in another shade of gray, or I could get it in, you know, like 27 colors. And then I'm like, I don't know. I just <laughs> I need to like tone it down to, as you were saying, David, like, let's just, let's offer a few key pieces. But I think that to your point that does, it builds community. And what I remember you saying, Julia, before I knew that you ran a like t-shirt business in your oh. dorm room, you know, we were talking about how we still show up in community, but we're wearing something that visually represents a cause or a solution to a community problem. Maybe we're going to the gym or, you know, the grocery store. Maybe we're just working out in our yard or walking. So to have something like this and a message that is now branded and visually, you know, appealing on apparel, I think is really cool. And I, I hope to see more of this coming back. Yeah, well, I hope, yeah, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, well, I, I'm just a little, um, oh gosh, maybe a little jealous. Like I wish my t-shirt stack was as big as yours, David. Oh, <laughs> uh, if you ask my wife, she would say I have too many for sure. So but she, she has Hydro Flask. That's right. Same. That's, that's Same I thing. guess one vice for another. But uh, she does make me call the herd a little bit every every few months. You know, all right, I got some new ones in. Some other ones got to go. Um, <laughs> but yes, I think that yeah, the, the the ability to create community, and that's actually Bonfire's mission statement, is to strengthen and inspire communities. And it all ties back into that, no matter what angle you're coming at from t-shirts, apparel in general, do help build that sense of community. And I think that's ultimately the mission, the, gr the grander mission that we're trying to serve. Wow. Million dollar question. I'm curious if we want anyone watching wants to do some type of apparel fundraising, what does the timeline look like from start of like, you know, Hey, I'm reaching out now. David's super cool. He has this amazing gong and another string instrument that doesn't look like a ukulele, but I can't <laughs> name it. 
<laughs> right behind him. And then now we want to like have this apparel fundraising. So like, what is that timeline? If you can share that with us. Yeah, that's a, it's a violin in the background. Okay. Uh, that's just to let everybody know that I'm a man of culture and taste. You know? Clearly, uh, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Um, don't let the uh, t-shirts fool you. Yeah, I, I don't know what the gong says about me, but it's probably something totally different. Um, the timeline. So it depends on if you're ready to go, You maybe you've got an awesome graphic designer in-house. You could literally launch a campaign in 15 minutes. Um, I, our platform is that user-friendly. You can upload a design. We also have an awesome D DIY graphic design tool right on the site. So we have, in fact, many uh, of our users come on every day, uh, whether they're with nonprofits or just everyday folks looking to fundraise for a cause, create a design right on, on our platform using the design tool and then launch right then and there. Um, the, the, the slightly more complex process, you reach out to David or anyone on my team. And when we start working with you on the consultative approach for, hey, you should launch for your 30th anniversary later this year, or it's gonna be an awareness month, which is a great use case for nonprofits, if not the most prominent one. So we would counsel you like, hey, let's actually, you may be excited about this, but your supporters only have so much bandwidth to give back to you throughout the year. Let's focus it in on a time that's gonna make the most impact. Um, so looking for those big impactful awareness days and months, and then, um, yeah, the design process, typically we can turn around a new one in about three to five business days and then work back and forth with the nonprofit on edits from there. And then, uh, getting you guys to get into nonprofit samples too. So, you know, we want you to be having an effective campaign right from the jump. Great way to do that is photo sharing with your employees, whoever it is. Maybe you have a very influential person in your network. You want to get the shirts too, we're happy to facilitate that on the house on our end. So, you know, all in all, that can take about two to three weeks, depending on, you know, the extent of the design process and getting, making sure everything's in place. But, you know, I would say it's always better to wait to find the right moment rather than rushing into something. Sure. Wow. I love it. I'm so interested. Of course, you know, since I had to witness my sort of past, <laughs> but with the two t-shirts, but yeah. I'm very, very intrigued. Um, this has been remarkable. And it's so hard to believe that um, we've blown through 30 minutes of your time, David. I want to make sure everybody has David Adley's information up for Bonfire. And it's very brave and provided his direct email address to us. So, um, but check out bonfire.com. Really interesting. And just to see the um, trajectory of change with the with the basic concept of a t-shirt is really cool and i mean so you have to to take a look at that and uh, check them out and again they also have some other products i'm julia patrick ceo of the american nonprofit academy i've been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself jared ransom ceo of the raven group again we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors um, we say this so often but without their support we would not be here talking about the cool topic of apparel fundraising. I just got to say, I love that. I really do. We also want to let you know that we are launching a new TV program, an additional one. What were we thinking, Jarrett? One's not enough, but we're adding a second one um, starting at the beginning of June. Fundraising. Is it two weeks? Yeah, it is. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> When we started, Julie's like, let's just do it for two weeks, another two weeks, two more weeks, two more weeks. So no, funding, fundraising events TV will be longer than two weeks. That That is more of an inside <laughs> joke, but we're coming up now on our 300th episode. And if that was two weeks, I must have been in a coma because it has been a really fast or long, long two weeks. <laughs> it was like the, yeah, the two weeks of, uh, yeah, it's Groundhog Day. Yeah, right? it is like Groundhog Day. Join <laughs> us on Friday because we're going to be talking about looking forward based on all the wonderful people that we've been able to um, interview. You know, we've had over 250 guests on the nonprofit show. And so we're going to take all of the, the amazing information that we've learned. Jarrett uses this great word, the landscape of, you know, understanding our sector. And so we're going to be talking about the things that people have shared with us about looking forward. And so I think it's gonna be a great opportunity to not only celebrate our milestone, but really give some ideas on um, what you, should, you, you and your organization might need to be thinking about or looking at as we move forward in the recoveries. 
Wow. Okay, David, I'm going to get out my old blue oyster cult um, t-shirt, concert t-shirt that's hanging on by a thread. Oh, <laughs> damn. I'm jealous. That's a vintage tea right there. That is vintage. It is. <laughs> Real vintage. It is vintage. But, you know, t-shirts are rocking it. And I'm so excited that um, Jarrett found you and that we could have this conversation. You know, as we end every show, we want to remind everyone to stay well so you can do well. We'll see you back here tomorrow.